this water drop, we're gonna look at using the power of the cloud to share data and in Forex ICM. And that's gonna be presented by Ryan Brown and myself, Hunter Sparks. So who is this for? Utilities who work collaboratively on projects between modelers and reviewers, or consultants that need to share models and results with in a single office or offices across the United States uh, or even internationally. And then really anyone who's running large multiple scenario models. So the workflow today is going to be sending a request to check the capacity for a new development. And then in the software, the modeler is going to open the model, add the new development and the, the appropriate information, run the model, create an S the SQL query and themes, and go ahead and review the results. And then the reviewer is gonna pick up, open that model from the cloud, download the results, run the SQL query and themes, and review the results. Now we're gonna show an example of how this could work in the real world where I am playing a city engineer slash reviewer and Ryan is going to be playing the modeler. I am going to send a request over to Ryan saying that we have a new development that is coming in and we want to check the capacity of our system. So I've provided the appropriate information in this email as you can see here and I'm going to go ahead and send that over to Ryan. Yeah, so I'll uh, pop over into ICM here. I, I just got the email from Hunter asking for um, a new development uh, to be off of Ogden Avenue. So I've got a, uh, a web map service here showing where Ogden Avenue is uh, just over in this area. Um, I'm going to go ahead and shut that web map service off and then come in here and um, draw a new subcatchment for my area. It doesn't really matter necessarily how big it is. Um, it's really going to be based on the um, on the new uh, uh, development size more than anything. So I'm just going to name it new development. And then we can um, kind of tidy things up later on. Um, so drains to node. Uh, we're going to just drain it into uh, kind of the end of this system right here. Uh, so if I click on here, I just get a, uh, what the node name is. So then I can uh, come back to my subcatchment and uh, put that into uh, my information there. Um, this is going to be based on just the wastewater profile that I already have in here that I've been using. Uh, there's only one profile available. Um, it's just going to be, uh, which is a residential curve uh, for us in this case. Uh, we did mention it was a 5,000 uh, person uh, population. So I am going to make an adjustment there so that it shows that it is a 5,000 person um, location there. And best practice, always use the flags. I don't have any flags built into here. Um, so I'm going to make some user defined ones uh, just so we know who who's changing it uh, and get that in. So there we go. I got that flag in there now. And I can now come in here and as I change information that flag gets updated. Um, with that, uh, that's pretty much it as far as adding in some new capacity areas. Uh, I can now validate the model. And I could have made a, a separate scenario for this too. I, mean, I just stuck with the base scenario in this case and kind of using the versions as my uh, different thing. So I uh, just got a bunch of warnings. Uh, these, this is just saying this, this other category up here um, isn't the same as some of the others uh, for, for a variety of these. So. Uh, no big deal. Uh, I added a little comment saying what I changed. Um, I don't need to validate the other um, scenarios that I have in here. So <clears throat> just committing that that one layer there. Um, after that, I've got an existing condition. So I ran this prior to uh, the, uh, the, um, the, the project. Um, so it's just representing my existing, if I update to latest, uh, and then using that base scenario in there, I can now run the simulations to uh, see what impacts this has on the system overall. Um, it does have to uh, pre-process on the local computer, uh, and then it gets sent up to the cloud, 
uh, gets run on the cloud and then you end up downloading the results. You'll notice I have a few other uh, simulations going on here. Uh, we're not limited to the number of simulations that we can run at one time. Uh, also, we're able to distribute across the cloud a variety of different um, uh, hardware specs and things like that. So it's not consuming any of your own uh, local computer uh, hardware or anything like that. Uh, should have named the should have named changed this uh, name, but oh well. Um, there's a little exclamation point indicating that. So we see we've downloaded things now, and now I can pull up uh, both of these and kind of get a, a comparison between the two uh, web map service that is missing. From here, I can um, I could create a theme. Um, so let's just look at the uh, the theme here, and I am going to scroll down to the max surcharge state. Um, so if you're familiar with this, this can be um, this one color. Um, or it can be um, zero, it can be one, or it can be or it can be anything between zero and one, or it can be two. Um, I'm just going to leave these like this right here, but kind of flip this around just to indicate. Um, that the twos are really bad, the in-betweeners are uh, okay. Use that to one, and then we're good to go on everything else. So if I hit apply there, I can hit apply and okay, and it's going to give me an indication of um, that max surcharge state um, and where the issues are lying. I can also uh, go ahead and basically save this for Hunter to be able to use uh, later. And then I can also uh, create a SQL query for him as well to be able to highlight those areas too. So sword query. I should say pipes at And in this one, this is going to be a uh, whoops, pretty simple SQL query here as well. Just sim dot max charge. Uh, let's say equals to save. Test that. Uh, so we've got a valid thing. I'm going to set it so that we're opening the selection in grid view. Uh, close that up, and so I can. Uh, drag this over and it's going to select all those links that um, have uh, have been um, seen as having that max surcharge state. So uh, if you noticed before, we did have uh, 120 in the version 11 here. If I come over here, test it on here, it's 120 as well. So basically what we're saying with the addition of this new catchment here, we don't have any issues. Uh, but with that, I can uh, now uh, uh, send an email back to Hunter saying everything's done. I've got some SQL queries and themes in there for you to um, help understand the system and see where if see where or if there are any issues with the simulation. So, Hunter, if you want to take it back and and we'll do your computer. And um, like we've been mentioning, this is all on the cloud, so. Uh, everything that I'm creating here, he's going to be able to pull up on his screen, even though he's in Denver and I'm in Raleigh. <laughs> We've got an unusual, uh, usual utility here. As you can see on this uh, master database, it is going to be the exact same thing that Ryan sees on his uh, because we are working off of the cloud. Um, so you're working off the same database so that information is kept and brought over. I'm going to choose the bottom two simulations that uh, Ryan set up, and we're going to go ahead and open that. And it's going to ask me if I want to uh, download the results from the cloud, which, of course, I do since Ryan already ran them, and we're just really trying to check the capacity and check the themes. So now that those results are downloaded, we can go ahead and pull those down. 
And so we're just getting some of those notices. And as we can see, we are looking at the same model that Ryan was looking at. This is the existing condition before our um, uh, before our development has been added. And I can go ahead if I want to and just drag the SQL query over. As we can see, uh, we're getting those lists that Ryan saw uh, as far as issues that we might run into. Um, all of the information that Ryan created is actually pulled over. And then we can also do the same thing for the capacity themes. So we're looking at the same area. And then I'm going to go ahead and open up the other results, which are going to show uh, the information, the uh, development that was added to the Western side. And I'm going to go ahead, open those results, as we can see, have them all selected. I can go through them, pick and choose, uh, create a report, pull this information down. And if I want just a very visual theme, I can pull these overs and I can see where I am running into some some possible com some capacity issues, but it looks like it's matching the existing um, really well. So that could be a good indication that this model is good to go. All right, so uh, just kind of wrapping things up with the benefits of what we can see with this new uh, cloud-based uh, approach, uh, the uh, improved collaboration across different modeling teams, regardless of where they are located, um, especially beneficial for those engineering service providers or those working with uh, utilities that might not be in the same uh, location. Also, uh, it, it didn't highlight too much in this video, but uh, faster computational for multi-scenarios. So. Uh, really, that's that's key when you have many, many, many different scenarios that you're trying to run all at the same time. I have done some testing on this uh, for a one-dimensional combined system. Uh, I ran about a thousand uh, simulations in the cloud. It took about six and a half minutes. Uh, and then I also ran those same uh, simulations on my local computer with two simultaneous runs set up in the agent. Uh, that took about nine minutes. So nothing uh, crazy there, but uh, it is just a 1D simple system that doesn't take more than a few seconds to run. The real highlight that I saw uh, was in the 1D, 2D system. Uh, in the cloud, I ran uh, roughly 3,600 uh, simulations. In the cloud, it took uh, just over two hours. And once I tried to do it on my local computer uh, with those simul two simultaneous runs, uh, I ended up giving up after 17 hours because uh, it was taking forever and it was locking up a lot of my uh, local resources on my computer so I wasn't able to do uh, as much as well. Based on the progress though um, that it had gotten through and the number of storms that it had gotten through uh, and kind of ext extrapolating things out, it probably would have taken uh, 24 to 26 hours. Uh, so pretty, pretty significant there in terms of being able to not only uh, not have your computer locked up with resources, but also being able to uh, run those uh, simultaneously much, much faster.